Yes, sir. So we're going to talk, quote unquote, goat talk, because everybody loves to call these athletes the quote unquote goat. So we're just going to have a quick discussion and whatnot and just talk about a little bit uh, and, ha- and and have a little discussion about mental health and how that's basically becoming a new trend. And everybody's using that as a scapegoat to get out of some situation. I mean, <laughs> accused murderers have been using mental health to get out of death sentences, to say the least. We're talking about Simone Biles. A lot of people want to call her the GOAT in gymnastics and whatnot. She's a beast at what she does. But for her to be the leader of her team, walking into a situation and walk out, I mean, come on, man. A lot of people got to be sour about that. At the Olympics, something that comes every four years that you know is upcoming, that you know if you're dealing with some shit that maybe you shouldn't participate, we want to talk about GOAT talk. Imagine Tom Brady. It's 2010. He, He just won the Super Bowl. Bang. Now it's 2014. He's back there with the same team, a little more experienced. He's dealing with some young guns that's there. They made it through the playoffs. Now they're in the Super Bowl. It's their first time. He's there. He's been there. You know what I mean? It's nothing. But you you know, you understand, playing as an athlete, you always want to get to the chip. It don't matter how many times you get there, right? Just imagine Tom Brady. He gets through all that blood, sweat, and tears, gets to the Super Bowl just to tell his teammates, not even tell his teammates, to tell the media that he's checking out for mental health. Everybody and their mama would have been calling Tom Brady a bitch. I put my money on it. It's just not to just throw shade at Simone, but it's just like, God damn, we want to coddle her for her mental health issues just because she want to talk about it. That's alleged, according to her, but now we're not even worried about the mental health of her teammates that she left behind. Coming from a competitive perspective, anybody that plays sports already knows what this is about. This is why a lot of athletes play injured. We want to talk about adversity. This is what adversity is all about. When you're going through some shit, this is why people will play sports because it's what they love. They got to take their mind off of what is fucking them up on a day-to-day basis and dealing with them demons, dealing with these issues, relationship issues, whatever is stressing you to fuck out. That's why you're playing sports because that's your solace. That's your escape from reality. That's why so many people watch sports because they don't want to deal with reality. They're looking for that escape. They're living vicariously through the individuals that are performing and competing for their country you know what you're signing up for we already know what time it is everybody gets your candles lit the matriarchal energy is taking over (laughs) we're we're watching espn let's just see how they want to cover this situation because we're in an era of participation trophies to where you just get rewarded just for being there just for being a good sport i already knew it was a wrap when i heard about that bullshit coming up We only got trophies if you came in first, second, or third. Or if you were the runner-up in a championship, man. Give me a break. I think that people are using Simone Biles as their own soapbox. If they want to make a point about how much they love Simone Biles, good for her. Mental health is important, and it is, of course. And if they want to make a point about athletes getting softer, they say, come on. Yeah, we know you have to perform. It's always been the case. I mean, y'all call athletes soft all the damn time. You, You call a bunch of NBA players soft. We're not going to go down and listen, talk about the names that you slander, but anybody that watches First Take, anybody that watches any sports media platform, y'all already know y'all caught a lot of people soft. Y'all say that NBA players in this generation is soft because of the technical fouls that get called, the fouls that get called, the flagrant fouls, and, and the basically the style of play because it's faster, it's less physical. So we're not going to go down that line. And that's the truth. There's truth to that, too. Um, uh, so I, I think people are trying, kind of using this to make a point. My feeling about Simone Biles is she is not obligated to compete as long as she's not like, uh, is, she, is she hurting Team USA? Did she pull out in such a way where she wasn't good, her points wouldn't accrue to, no, she waited until that wouldn't be, the, like she competed as far as it wouldn't hurt them and now it hurt us and now it's like, okay, I want to step back, I'm not feeling it right now. That's okay. What I notice is, and she's the greatest of all time, Like, I don't know if people want to make the point, well, you can't be the greatest of all time and still do this sort of thing. Well, obviously you can, because she is the greatest of all time, and she's doing it. Um, But what what occurs to me is you see Simone Biles doing this. You saw um, uh, Naomi Osaka doing this. And we are living in a time, like, why all of a sudden is this happening, right, to high-profile athletes, women, you know, some of the highest-profile female athletes in the world. And I think it's a combination of social media 
which has created more media and therefore more criticism, more negative media. Um, I would imagine, I'm not a woman of color, but Kimberly, you can <laughs> talk to this more directly. <laughs> than Shit, you sure talk like it though, Max. I mean, you sure do talk like a woman of color, just for just a woman in general, bro. And I imagine particularly for uh, women of color. But I, but I would also say that, that along with that added pressure and added negative stuff coming people's way, there's also empowerment, you know? And so you can feel that added pressure, but you can also do something. Where is the empowerment of stepping out, showing that you're mentally weak for this situation? A lot of people are going to think like that, too. Not saying that she's mentally weak right now, but anybody that just feels like you could just step out of a situation because you're not feeling good or you got something on your mind and whatnot. It just like that's what makes you great. That make that's what gets you through whatever you're getting through because you shouldn't be dwelling on any situation for that long anyway. You need to move on. Something is bothering you for that long, that means you're spending too much time thinking about that shit. Get that shit off your mind and do what you love. You wouldn't have nothing to talk about or stress about. I mean, damn, I understand. We going through shit on a day-to-day -day basis. We just trying to stress less. Why stress more? Got it. Athletes are now more empowered by some of the same kind of mechanisms that create the pressure, including social media. And so now if they are feeling this added pressure and they're feeling like, you know what, I'm not feeling this right now, they actually have a say in what happens. And I think that we're like uh, Naomi Osaka and now, and now Simone Biles, um, are reacting to the time and place and the, the, the kind of pressures that of their, the time and place in which they're competing. And, but they also have uh, remedies for that. Look, you know what? I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to take a step back. And I would just reinforce again the idea that for those... What, what, what the hell are you trying to say, Max, man? You, you over here stuttering and all this bullshit trying to come up with something slick to say that makes sense. But you can't talk because you have nothing to talk about, though. Like, what the hell are you trying to say out here? We're talking about athletes that know what time their competitions come around, but you want to step out when that competition comes up, when you only have a certain amount of competitions to compete in. It's like, what the fuck? You got an off season and everything that you compete in, but you want to step out in the heat of the moment. That just doesn't make any fucking sense. When you could just announce that shit in the off season, and then there wouldn't be anything to really be talking about other than... You're not going to be there this year. What to expect? Maybe the next competition that you're involved in. You know what I mean? We wouldn't be talking about, or you wouldn't be having all these ideas or opinions. One word on one side, talking about you're courageous. On one side, you quit on your teammates. It wouldn't be all this bullshit if you would announce this in the off season or something like that. Say, well, then you can't be the greatest, but she already is. Mm -hmm. So obviously you can be. Do you want to yeah, know, Kimberly? Oh. oh, go ahead, Kim. Yeah, go ahead, Kimberly. Oh, uh, first of all, I'll just say Simone Biles had already solidified herself as the GOAT. Tokyo was going to be the icing on the cake. There was nothing that she was going to do that was going to make us say, oh, now she's really the yeah. GOAT. Um, as somebody who covers athletes, as somebody who's covered baseball, football, basketball, I've watched uh, Major League Baseball pitchers have the yips. I've had talked to baseball players about... What the hell does that have to do with anything when anybody that's participating in these sports are dealing with the yips, dealing with butterflies, that anxiety that you're getting when you want to make a play, when you're trying to predict the outcome, when you're trying to make a move before your opponent does, things like that. Everybody got the yips, man. Pressure bust pipes. That's what this comes down to. You, it's okay to not be perfect. We understand living in this highlight social media planet to where we don't see the flaws on your Instagram page. We only see your highlights. It's okay to not be perfect. That's why you have your teammates to pick you up and to make you get on your grind. She didn't put up her best performance and then you want to step out talking about they should be fine with the fucking silver medal. Who are you to tell them what they're going to be fine with? Everybody's dealing with pressure in sports, dealing with pressure in academics and everything. But you can't check out in the middle of the SAT talking about you're dealing with mental health issues. What are you talking about? In all situations, you're going to have to deal with adversity. When did everybody become so damn soft and weak-minded to where you feel like you could just check out in the heat of the moment, bro, and shit on your teammates? You did all that preparation, all, the, all that time in the off season or in the off years for you to check out? This not just about Simone Biles, but just in anybody that's in a team situation. 
Just coming from the perspective from everybody that y'all want to call quote-unquote goats. Just imagine LeBron checking out on a game six, down three to two, because of mental health. <laughs> Cons um, consulting a sports psychologist. Um, the pressure is real. I think what, as Max was saying, what's happening now is that athletes are finally being honest about the burden. You know, I was watching the Olympic coverage over the weekend, and I noticed a Simone Biles interview where she said, she talked about how at 24, she felt it in her body. The, the injuries felt, she doesn't, her body hurts, she feels old. You wanna know why she feels old? Let's keep it funky, woman. Your body wasn't designed to be doing all of these movements, all of these flips, all of these different angles and takeoffs from all these different positions and things of that nature. Your body was built to do other things. You know what I'm saying? Like get pregnant. A lot of people are going to hate that comment, but yo, it is what it is. Why you think your joints, why you think your body feel all old because you've been flipping since you was eight years old and now you mid-twenties and you got back problems? Like... Your body wasn't designed to be the way it is. You can lift all those weights. You can do CrossFit and whatnot, but you're going to feel it one day. And of course, I was like, wait, what? At 24, she feels old? And then she started talking more about the pressure and how she, she worries about the, the routines and injuring herself as she's doing the routines. And that's something she didn't feel when she was 19, where she just kind of felt carefree and said, I'm just going to go for it. I think it's good that athletes now are saying, no, I'm not okay. Because most of us aren't. Day to day. It's only good when this comes from a woman. If it's coming from a man, then that man is weak. He should retire. What is he thinking? He needs to get it together. He needs to call his agent. All this type of bullshit and slander y'all gonna throw at the men's direction. But when it's a woman, this is perfect. This is good for sports. We need more athletes to be honest about what they're dealing with in the locker room. <laughs> hour to hour in real life if we're really going to be honest all of us can can understand what that feels like so to so imagine simone biles greatest gymnast is saying i'm not myself this doesn't feel right the the courage it took for her to to say that to admit that to not be able to compete is huge and a lot of people right now are it's awfully courageous to make that move after you don't perform at a top-notch level or what was expected of you. It's very easy to step out after that. No shade. No shade. There's so Fox, whether it's on social media, on different sports programs, saying, if I was Simone Biles, did it, you're not. You're not. You never will be. You, I would have done this if I, yeah, you couldn't. So, so I, I credit these athletes right now, and I hope more of them will, will feel better about speaking their truth because athletes, pressure's not new, but them being vocal about what they're struggling with and dealing with is new. Listen, man, my late grandmother gave me the greatest gem I ever got, and I've gotten some great gems from some, pe some high-profile people. But my grandmother, Christine Spears, gave me the greatest gem. Y'all know what that was? What is Mine your damn business <laughs> yeah that shit was so funny nigga max kellerman laughing like he never heard that damn joke or somebody say that shit in his lifetime get the fuck out of here y'all never mind y'all business get your information from tmz and then you talk about it because you have nothing else to talk about you're in everybody else's business you're in kevin durant's business Kyrie's business ad lebron dame the list goes on but when it's a woman Everybody needs to mind their business and not have anything to say about these women because they are going through things that you can't imagine. <laughs> I hope everybody still got their candles lit, man, for this little situation that we got going on over here, man. It's a, it's a heartwarming moment, man. Let's check it out. Mental health is <laughs> yeah. not up for discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, individuals' <laughs> mental health is not up for discussion. That ain't your business. Right? You could talk about Simone Biles. If it ain't our business, why is it even in the public for discussion? Because mental health issue is something that a lot of people don't want to talk about. But since this is becoming a trend, like a TikTok challenge, everybody wants to be part of being a victim, getting coddled. Everybody wants to talk about their problems. Ain't even trying to say, like, nobody's dealing with some shit. They shouldn't bring it up. But it's like, bring it up to people that actually care. 
Like, you know what I mean? Go to your physician officer. Go to somebody. Go to a loved one and whatnot. You don't got to announce that shit to social media. So many people are getting brainwashed by these athletes because they want to do all these things on social media because everybody wants to be an open book. Everybody wants to be so transparent, but that just doesn't work for everybody, man. The gymnast, as how she performed as a, as a gymnast, but her mental health ain't up for nobody damn discussion because to Kimberly's point, we don't know what that girl going through, that woman going through. We don't know what people are going through. And listen, I played in the NFL for nine years, right? I've, I've, I've followed sports my entire life. I would rather Simone Biles and Naomi Osaka take a step back for their mental health as opposed to self-medicating if y'all know what I'm talking about, yeah. as opposed to dealing with these things in other ways where I've seen tear guys' careers apart because it was mental health things going on, but they found other avenues that wasn't good for them as individuals to do, and it ended up hindering not only them as people, but mm -hmm. their careers. I've seen this. This is not something I'm speculating about. I've seen guys not deal with mental health. Listen, I come from a generation where you don't deal with mental health. I come from a generation where people pass it off as, man, Mark is just crazy. He'll be all right. He'll deal with it later or something that happened or impact. Success don't make your mental health better. Money mm -hmm. doesn't make your yeah. mental health better. The things you accomplish and calling people to go. That's according to you. You can't, you can't talk about everybody or speak for everybody. I know you're just saying this, you know, just to say it, to go along with your rant. But what we got to understand is, <laughs> money can change a lot of people's mental health because that fix a lot of situations. What works for you doesn't work for everybody, vice versa. That doesn't make their mental health better. Michael Jordan stepped away from basketball. Thank you. I get it, dude. You're doing any and everything to support your argument, man. This matriarchal energy, man. The woman can do no wrong, especially the so-called black woman because she's the biggest baby on the planet, I guess. Whenever she does something, she's courageous. Whenever she does something wrong, she's courageous. Whenever she just sits there, she's brave. I mean, y'all got to cut the bullshit. Michael Jordan never checked out in the middle of a playoff series talking about I got mental health issues. Like I said, this man has a pair of shoes called the flu games. This media, this entertainment industry strives off of adversity because it's narrative. But nowadays with this new generation of athletes... The new narratives are going to be mental health issues, anxiety, white supremacy. The list goes on, bro. To be labeled a GOAT, to be labeled great in your sports and things like that, nobody's going to remember you checking out for mental health as that being a great accomplishment in your list of accolades. That's going to be on the negative side because the mental health shit, what you're dealing with in your mental, you clear that shit out and you do what you got to do. Easier said than done. But like I said, you know what you're signing up for. Stephen A loves to say that on his show. I'm surprised he wasn't there today to tell this sister, you know what you signed up for. Like he would tell Kyrie or some other brother that he loves to slander, not to digress. You want to talk about mental health issues, but then you go on the podiums to further elaborate on mental health issues and this anxiety and all this stress as if you're the only gymnast in the Olympics in Tokyo dealing with that shit. How many countries are competing? But we want to make this about Simone Biles and mental health. If we're going to keep going down the line of this participation trophy path, the narratives are only going to get weaker. The ratings are only going to get lower. And people, ESPN is just going to have to get off of the cable box. And then sports are just going to get weak because it's supposed to be a survival of the fittest. The strong will survive. You guys are the modern day gladiators. So if you're watching the modern day gladiators talk about mental health, then what the fuck kind of product are we going to have here? Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. It's enough of that. I'm out.